Hi, you're watching the third episode of Proto.io Essentials, a series of videos covering core features of Proto.io. Watching all three videos in the series will help you quickly build up your prototyping skills so that you can start creating your own prototypes in no time. In the second episode, we focused on introducing reusability to our prototype, learning how to create both reusable containers, like the rating stars on two screens of our prototype, as well as custom components, such as the main call to action button on multiple project screens. In addition, we covered scrollable containers, looking at both vertical and horizontal instances. Finally, we learned how to create a page controller for the horizontal snap carousel of our products page. If you haven't already, we strongly suggest you go back and watch the first two episodes, as they cover vital concepts you need to be familiar with to understand this third and final episode. In this episode of Proto.io Essentials, we'll be covering states. States are one of Proto.io's key features. You can define a number of different states your screens and containers can be in and reuse containers in any of those states. You can move from one state to another using any kind of gesture or interaction. Most importantly, you can animate the transition from one state to another. In this video, we'll explore all these cool uses of states. Picking up from where we left off in the last video, let's make a few changes to our rating stars container and add states to it. These states will allow us not only to reuse the rating stars containers in different places in our prototype, but will also give us the ability to show different ratings each time the container is used. Let's start by double-clicking our container to enter it. Once inside, we will create six states, one to represent each rating from zero to five stars. To create the first state, we have to edit our original state by changing the color fill of all stars, indicating a score of no rating. Now that we have a no rating state, we can add more. To add a new state, click on the New Container State button. In this new state, change the color of one of the stars. This will indicate a rating of 1. Repeat this process until you have all six states. 0 stars, 1 star, 2 stars, 3 stars, 4 stars, and finally, 5 stars. Let's quickly rename the different states for easy identification. When the rating stars container is selected on any screen, you'll notice the Properties Inspector now has a container state option. From here, you can choose which state you want to display. Choose the five stars state and you'll see the change on your prototype instantly. Switch to four stars and the new rating now becomes visible for our comfy sofa. Exploring this further, let's add the newly edited rating stars container inside the products container. When adding a container with multiple states to any screen or container, you'll always see the first state by default. As before, simply use the Container State option in the Properties Inspector to apply the desired state. Now that we've covered using states to enhance reusable containers, let's go one step further and take a look at how you can use states to create beautiful animations. We'll be recreating the button animation you saw at the beginning of this video. To start, we'll have to convert the Buy button to a container. You can do this by right-clicking on the button and selecting Convert to Container. Next, open the container and expand the size of its canvas using the resizing handles. The container canvas should be as wide as your screen and a little bit taller than the button. The purpose is to center the button and create space for the animation, as we'll be using a nice ease-back effect. The button will be moving in from below, so in the first state, place it just below the container canvas area. In the second state, center the button on the container's canvas. Now you have two states one with the button below the canvas, and one with the button on the canvas. To create the animation, you must add a state transition. This is how you'll link the two states together. When you choose to add a transition, you'll see a pop-up asking you to specify between which states you want the transition to take place. After choosing the desired states, click Create, and, just like that, the animation is automatically created for you. You can preview the animation by clicking the Play button. Next, we'll take a look at the Easings menu and add the final touch with the Ease Back effect. Excellent. The animation works as intended. Returning back to the Product Details screen, expand the container area in the same way that we did within the container.
An even easier way to achieve this is by choosing the Set to Original Size option from the right-click menu. All that's left is to create a trigger to launch the button animation. We want the button animation to play each time we see the product detail screen. So in this case, we'll use a screen interaction. To add a screen interaction, go to the Product Details Screen thumbnail in your Screens menu and click the Edit Screen Interactions button just below it. Click Add a New Screen Interaction. From the Triggers menu, pick Screen Show. Under the Action menu, select Change Container State. Finally, pick the container you want and specify which state you want the trigger to change it to. To make sure the animation plays seamlessly every time we enter the Product Details screen, we have to add another interaction. This time, the interaction will instruct the container to change back to its original state on Screen Hide. Now let's save and preview our work. Fantastic! The animation works perfectly. So, thanks for watching the final episode of Proto-IO Essentials. We strongly encourage you to spend a few minutes to try out and experiment with the skills you've learned today. If you have further queries regarding Proto-IO, please feel free to visit our Help Center or contact our helpful support team. Happy prototyping!